Hello and welcome to Kendo Nagasaki 101, the channel where you can find out all about the mystical and spiritual work of Kendo Nagasaki, the masked wrestler and mystic. My name is Atlantis and I'm the current spokesperson for Kendo. Many people watching this will already know something about Kendo Nagasaki, but before we go any further, it's important to understand that this channel is not about wrestling. Kendo no longer wrestles, but he does still do the work which he's always done at the same time as he's wrestled, and that is work which he describes as empowerment. However, both Kendo's wrestling and his healing and mentoring work have common roots, all of which are fascinating. So let's begin exploring the origins of this phenomenal icon of British culture. Kendo Nagasaki first appeared on the British professional wrestling scene in 1964, over 50 years ago, and no one had ever seen anything like him. In an era long before the glamour and glitz of the WWE, professional wrestlers were hard men who in Britain studied a skill called catch wrestling in order to show an audience how skillfully they could defeat an opponent who was similarly trained. As it was so much about the pure skill in those days, these men were not flamboyant, in most cases not even stylish, appearing carrying their gear in a nondescript bag and arriving at the wrestling ring in their trunks and wearing a dressing gown. It was all very workmanlike. But Kendo was completely different. Right from his very first appearance, he wore the armor of the Japanese sword sport Kendo, and he carried a samurai sword, which he would whip out of its scabbard and flourish menacingly in the faces of his hapless opponents. He also wore a cape, and under the Kendo helmet, he wore a full head fabric mask with the emblem of the Kendo helmet grill on it. No one knew what to make of it. They'd never seen anything like it, but that was just the start. Kendo's wrestling skills were absolutely amazing. Normally, brand new wrestlers don't really stand a chance of winning in their first few bouts, because even if they're highly skilled, they just don't have the experience to defeat one of the established wrestlers they'd been matched against. No promoter would put two newcomers together, as they wouldn't yet have the fans to root for them or to make it an exciting bill, so it would almost certainly be a boring match and therefore wouldn't be staged. Also, newcomers would be expected to lose, so that the more established wrestlers could be seen to be maintaining their reputations. If a newcomer tried to get one over against an old hand, he would know just how to slap the upstart down, by fair means or foul, and the status quo around the established heroes and villains would be maintained. A newcomer would then have to spend a few years paying his dues and working his way up until he'd built up enough of a following to fill the halls and enough of a reputation to credibly defeat an established wrestler. Now, I know that these days many feel that professional wrestling has been debunked and exposed as being fixed or arranged, and what I've just said sounds like it's supporting that position, but a brand new wrestler genuinely wouldn't be able to overcome the experience and the wiliness of the old guard. Certainly for new wrestlers, wrestling wasn't fixed, it was truly incredibly tough. However, unlike any other wrestler before him, Kendo Nagasaki completely overturned the normal way of things. Not only was the man behind the mask incredibly fit, but he was also extremely agile and very fast, and he'd studied judo to Olympic level, which really helped his wrestling. In the early 1960s, all serious wrestlers trained at Billy Riley's Snake Pit Gym in Wigan, which specialised in the toughest and highest quality catch wrestling training in the world, and the man behind Kendo's mask had done this, but he'd also studied judo and kendo under the brilliant Japanese master martial artist Kenchiro Abe, who had also taught him Eastern mysticism. So, looking like an oriental martial arts nightmare and being skilled to the teeth in things that his opponents didn't even know existed, Kendo Nagasaki took the British professional wrestling world by storm from day one. He was amazing to watch and genuinely no one could stop him. You see, Kenshiro Abe had trained the man behind the mask in Zen Buddhism and deep meditation and about the Samurai Honor Code, the Bushido, but it turned out that there was something else which was a huge influence on him, and it came from the depths of reincarnation. Ever since he'd been a young child, the man behind Kendo's mask had had dreams of fierce combat, and that he'd always been closely involved with another soul in particular, but he'd never been able to make sense of these dreams. It was only after Abe had begun training and teaching him that meaning began to emerge from his dreams, a key element of which was that he saw that he'd been a samurai warrior in at least one past life. In deep meditation, he also saw that in this present life, he would influence a great many people, not only by inspiring them with his incredible skill in combat sports, but also as a healer and mentor. 
As a matter of fact, this work has always been at least as important to Kendo as becoming the most dominant and successful British professional wrestler of all time, which he did, and he eventually realised that his main mission in this life would be to share the secrets of personal empowerment. You might ask, why would Kendo want to do this? Well, it's for a number of reasons, but I'm afraid my time is up for this video, so please do come back to hear some more about the great Kendo Nagasaki. Thank you for watching, I'm Atlantis and I hope to see you all again very soon. So, as Kendo would say, onwards, bye bye.